set them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what risen from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. The transfiguration of the Lord Jesus is an anticipation of his resurrection and therefore an anticipation of his victory over death and sin. He showed his glory, his majesty to his disciples to strengthen their faith that he is the Messiah, the only begotten Son of God. It was through that theophany that manifestation of God, that manifestation of the one and triune God, that they were to believe more that Jesus is indeed the one sent by God the Father to redeem mankind and to grant us salvation. We can see this theophany, this manifestation of God in the voice, the Father, the shadow, the Holy Spirit, and Christ, of course, the very presence of the Son of God. But this feast day, this event of the transfiguration of the Lord also tells us of our own glorification. We are called to reproduce in ourselves the glory of God, the glory of Jesus Christ. Our bodies are called to be resurrected and to participate of the glory of Christ. Our ultimate goal is the contemplation of the glory of the face of God, one and triune. So we see here two things related to ourselves. First, that our very body is called to reproduce the glory of the risen Christ. And that our ultimate goal is to see God face to face, is to contemplate his glorious face and to participate in his light. We were called to this. And knowing this tells us of the great dignity that we have, that you have. We are earthly and we're called to become heavenly. This is, I don't know the word, exact, the exact word, but I would say this is amazing. I, I bet there is a, a better word to describe how wondrous our dignity and our call is. Maybe there are no words. There are no words to describe the mercy of God and what He has planned for us. 
that we partake of the same divinity of God, one and triune. We, we read in, in the first letter of St. John, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What I just told you. And St. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians says, All of us, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord who is the Spirit. What an amazing vocation. What a wonderful call. that we are to reproduce the glory of the Lord, that we are to be transformed into to the same image from glory to glory, that we are to contemplate the face of God with unveiled faces. There is a, um, a father of the church that says that since the Lord God dwells within us, we are to go inward and contemplate his face. That is the path of prayer. The path of prayer is that of leading us to the contemplation of the glory of God's face within us. And we're called to this. We should, I, I really like these verses from the Psalms. You can find them in, in Psalm 31 and Psalm 80. And I really like to repeat these verses. And I encourage you to repeat them constantly. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your mercy. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your mercy. And then, Lord God of hosts, restore us, light up your face, and we shall be saved. Again, Lord God of hosts, restore us, that is to say, renew us, glorify us, save us, give us your glory. Engrave in ourselves your very self, your very image, the risen Christ. Lord God of hosts, restore us, light up your face, and we shall be saved. Now, how can we be transfigured? Because we are called to be transfigured in Christ. The key is to listen to him to go up the mountain and listen to him. We also read in the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, and even though our gospel is veiled, notice this, and even though our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this age has blinded them has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Let us ask the Lord, Lord, I don't want to be blind. I don't want to perish. I want to believe in you. Unveil for me the glory of the gospel of Christ. I want to listen to you because only by listening to your word, by conforming myself to your teaching, then I'll reproduce in myself the image of Christ. 
may the God of this age, that is Satan, the evil one, may he not blind my mind so as not to believe in the gospel. I would like you to um, recall that um, passage from the Old Testament when Moses went to Mount Sinai and he contemplated God and he, when he came down the mountain, his face was resplendent, was shining. And the people of Israel couldn't bear gazing on that light coming out from his face. And they asked him, Moses, cover your face, cover your face. But we are not to cover our face. We are called to let the gospel of Christ shine through us so that others may see through us the glory of the Lord and encounter the gospel of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're called to witness to the truth of the gospel and to let the grace of God shine in us. Let us pray in silence that amidst our fragilities and weaknesses, we may sing the wonders God does in us. This is how we sing the transfiguration of the Lord in our lives. Let us pray in silence.